Today, we're talking about 10 different updates here in DaVinci Resolve 19 Fairlight that you might not have heard of or might have slipped through the cracks a little bit because of all of the other really big, awesome features. So let's just get in Resolve. I'm gonna show you 10 things that got updated here in Fairlight for DaVinci Resolve 19. So check it out. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve Fairlight right here, musical notes at the bottom. And the first one, number one here, is in addition to our EQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up EQ on my dialogue track. Now, if I play through my dialogue track, check out what we see on the EQ here. Leaving her feeling separated and only partly human. Jane had 12 kids and the birds. So we now have a frequency analyzer that we can see where the different frequencies are happening on our EQ, which makes it really helpful to be able to make changes to the EQ. And one other cool thing, if I just play through this, if I grab a point and bring it up, we're gonna be able to see what the changes is making on that frequency analyzer. Check this out. And I've taken care of them all 24 seven. So when she came to the realization that she was pregnant for the- so you can see the difference between the two lines there. One is the clip without any EQ applied to it. And then the brighter colored line and shading shows you where the EQ is being changed. Pretty cool, something that we've wanted here in Fairlight for a long time. So that's pretty cool. I like that. And uh, it's gonna come in real handy when you're editing your audio. Number two here is going along with that. We actually have an EQ effect. So if I come to my mixer right here, make sure your mixer is open at the top. Mixer, we wanna to come to our effects. If we come down to metering, Fairlight effects, and we have frequency analyzer. So again, another way to analyze your audio to see where things might be happening in different frequencies. And this is on the track level. So if I play through my track here. 13th time, she became a. We can see where things are falling. Let me just mute this here so we can play through and watch this. And you can change it from spectrum to waterfall right here, just so you can see kind of what's happening with the audio in your clip. Now you can also come up to the mode and choose your low frequencies, mid range or high frequencies to get a zoomed in look on how these different frequencies uh, are coming across in your particular track. Now what's kind of cool is that if you made a bunch of changes to your dynamics and your track level EQ, if I close this out real quick, coming down into our mixer here, if you have your effects set as last, like I do right here, you're gonna see that frequency analyzer reflect all of the changes that you've made along the way because it's gonna be at the end of the signal chain or the signal order. So anything that you've already applied like EQ or dynamics that should be reflected in that final frequency analyzer there for that particular plugin. Number three here is another improvement to our track level EQ. So if I just go ahead and open up my EQ again, when it comes to my band one and band six here, we now have an option to change the slope of our either high pass or low pass filters. So right now I've got it on 12. You can see I can change it to six, 12, 18, or 24. So that's just gonna say how fast is that frequency gonna drop off once it gets to my point one, right? Based on whatever frequency I have it set at, how fast is that gonna drop the frequencies below that? So you can change the slope of it however you want there. And you can also do that on the top end for a low pass filter here. We can make our changes to make it steeper or not as steep, more gradual, uh, depending on what you need for your clip. So that's pretty handy. I like that feature being able to change it and modify it however we might need for our audio clips. Number four is an update to the panning and how we can hear what's happening with the panning when it comes to our audio clips. So in Fairlight here, I've got several tracks of dialogue. And if I look in my mixer, you can see that we've got two tracks panned. So that way we can hear them on the right and left channels a little bit more. I'm gonna to come to our mixer here and I'm going to double click on a pan. And in our pan window right here, we can click on the 3D. That's gonna open that up. And now we can see where we've panned our sound to. And if I click these different options right down here, we can rotate around just to kind of see where have we placed that sound. So you can choose any one of these options to kind of see where that sound is going. If you wanna adjust the sound, we do have options over here. We can go right to left. We can go front to back or up or down. So I think that's a handy new tool if you're doing a lot of panning and moving sound around that can really help you visualize where it's going, where it's coming from and that kind of stuff. 
Number five here are some improvements that were made to the voice isolation. Now you're not going to see a difference in the way that the voice isolation looks, but you may notice a difference in how it functions. Now the voice isolation should work better on a wider range of audio sources, just so that it can kind of pick up the voice a little bit better and do a better job at isolating the voice and getting rid of that background noise that you really don't want in your clips. It should also improve performances when it comes to the stereo sound of the clips while you're using the effect. And another big one here is that it should have more responsive buffering, right? So in the past, sometimes I noticed, you know, you would turn on that effect and when you started to play through, it took a second or two for it to kick in. Well, now it should be good to go. It should just start right away and you shouldn't notice that buffering that sometimes you saw uh, when it came to using the voice isolation. So let me just show you where it is, how it works in case you're not familiar with it. It's a pretty great tool and uh, I use it all the time. It's really good. Check this out. So in Resolve here, if you're not familiar with how to add in the voice isolation, you can do it in the edit tab or right here in Fairlight. And what you want to do is select your track, whether you're in edit page or in Fairlight here, open up your inspector. And then right here, we have voice isolation. You can go ahead and turn it on. Now, if you are in Fairlight here, we also in our mixer have track effects and we can turn on voice isolation right there. So either way, you want to do it there. You want to do it here in Fairlight. Either way can work, but you're only going to find it in the inspector if you're over in the edit tab. So I'm going to open up my controls right here. And now generally I'm not going to use this at hundred percent. I'm going to leave it at something like 20% and just kind of help reduce some of that background noise I don't want. So I'm going to turn it off. I'll turn it on as it's playing through and you can hear what it sounds like. For the Leeds family, stormy nights meant bad luck. So when Jane went into labor on that... So there you go, cleans up the audio nice. And now I haven't noticed any delays or problems with it. It does seem to work a little bit better. Uh, but one of those just quality of life things where when you hit play and start playing back through your timeline, the effect should just start working. There hasn't been that I've noticed any delays in it starting and uh, does a great job. Love voice isolation. One of the best things they ever added here in Resolve for your audio. Another track level effect that's gotten some improvements here is the dialogue leveler. So if you don't want to go in and level out your own clips, use the dialogue leveler because it does a couple of good things for you. Check this out. So in Resolve, again, I'm in Fairlight here, but you can use this track level effect in the edit page as well. Selecting your track, I'm going to come up to the dialogue leveler. I'm going to turn it on. Now you can select your different options here as far as what might work best for your clips. But what's nice is that it not only reduces the loud dialogue, which is like a little bit of a compressor on there, it'll make the quiet dialogue a little bit louder, which is like a little makeup from your dynamics panel on there. And or it can reduce some of that background noise for you. So if you did want to open up the dialog box for the dialog leveler, click this little guy right here. And now we're going to actually get a little graph so we can see what's happening with the dialogue leveler as we play back through our clip. So let's check it out. The family knew something bad was bound to happen. And after hours of waiting and hearing Jane's cries, the baby was born. So you can see it's making some changes there. It's doing a pretty decent job. Now the background noise reduction there doesn't work as well as the voice isolation. But the improvement here is that this effect, this track level effect, it just starts, right? It used to be a little bit of a delay um, from what I noticed when I used to use it a little more often, but now it's kind of just starts right away and the response time is really good and they've made some improvements there. So if you use the dialog leveler, you're gonna be happy to know it should be working a little bit smoother for you. This next update is pretty cool and I do like it. I think it comes in handy. It's called exclusive solo mode. Let's check out what it does. So sometimes when I'm working in Fairlight with my audio, I like to solo tracks. And what this does is allow me to hear only the tracks that have the solo button soloed. So if I hit the solo button here on multiple tracks, I can hear multiple at a time. For example, if I only wanted to hear, you know, my mute, my multicam track down here, family stormy nights meant then I can solo that. If I only wanted to hear my music, I can solo that or my uh, fireplace there. And let's say I wanted to add in some of the dialogue. The family knew something bad was bound to happen. I can solo both tracks, but let's say I want to go through and just quickly solo individual ones so that I only hear one at a time. I don't want to be able to solo multiple tracks. Well, if we come up to our Fairlight menu and down to exclusive solo, now when I solo a track, it'll only solo one track. So if I click to another one, it's only going to have one track actively soloed at a time. So this could be really handy if you're just trying to solo a bunch of different things. You don't want to have to click and unclick. So we can just pop around things really quick and easy. Check it out. Yeah, or did he die? 
the baby made it all right. Just not really in the... So that one comes in handy. I think I'm going to be using that one a lot, the exclusive solo there. So I can just solo out individual tracks without having to, you know, unsolo, solo, solo, unsolo, a whole bunch of different tracks. So just makes it uh, pretty easy. And if you want to turn it off, go back to Fairlight menu and you can turn it off. So then you can solo multiple tracks again if you're trying to work with, you know, mixing and blending things together. So I like that one. That one's pretty sweet. Number eight here is group panning. So if we have a group of tracks, we can pan them all together. Let's check this out. So in Fairlight here, if I go ahead and open up my mixer, we have the ability to create groups of tracks. So if I come down to my group section right here, and if for some reason you don't see group, you can always click on the three dots and turn on all these different things. Make sure they're checked so that you can see your different things here. And right down here, you see we have track group. So if I click on the group area, I can create a group. I can select what channels I want to put in there. Let's say I want to add in my dialogue channels, which are all these guys. I'm going to put them in there. And now we've got our different controls of what this group can control, right? So I'm going to turn on all these things right here. And you notice panning is right here. I guess panning wasn't there before. I don't know. I don't use groups a ton. Uh, occasionally I do, but most of the time I'll use a bus instead. But these are all the things that now we can adjust as part of this group. So if I say, uh, let's call this group dialogues, go ahead and hit save. So now these three tracks are all in the dialogue group. And what happens if I come to the group and then let's say I want to move the panning, you can see they all kind of move relative to each other. We can make changes where they'll all kind of get affected together. And that's what part of being a group does. It helps them be adjusted together as a group. So panning is what was added here in Resolve 19. Number nine here is another one that's pretty cool. It's called Smart Zoom, and it helps you just use a keyboard shortcut to zoom in to your selection in Fairlight and then zoom back out really quick and easy. Check this one out. So I'm going to use my focus mode tool here just to make a little selection on my timeline. You can set in and out points however you want to do it. Now, the default keyboard shortcut that's supposed to be set up is Option Command E on a Mac, which would be Alt Control on a PC. Mine wasn't set up right, so I just went into keyboard customization and I mapped it to that. But if I hold my Option Command and E on a Mac, boom, it punches right into that uh, selected area or the range that I have selected there. And then if I'm done and I want to go all the way back to my previous view there, I can, again, Option Command E, which is Alt Control E on a PC, and it's going to jump you right back out. Now, you can always use Shift Z, and that's going to zoom your entire timeline for you. That's another handy one. Uh, that's not new. That's always been there, but just a little bonus tip there for you. So that's kind of cool, the, uh, the, the zoom into your timeline based on wherever your selection is. I think that could come in really handy if you're trying to jump around your timeline really quickly. So that one is called Smart Zoom, and if you need to set it in your keyboard customizations, just search for Smart Zoom and it should find it for you. And then you can put in whatever keyboard shortcut that you want. Number 10 here, our last and final thing that got added in Resolve 19, that's a little extra thing that you might not have heard of, is the automatic patching when you're trying to record into DaVinci Resolve. Typically, we've got to go open our patch window. We have to select our microphone, patch it in. Then we can go ahead, arm our track to record, and then record. But now with Resolve 19, you can just hit the arm to record button, and it's going to automatically patch in the first thing that comes up with your you know, audio interface or your microphone, whatever's selected on your computer. It's going to set that as the recording input. It's going to automatically patch it for you. So let's check this out in Fairlight. So in Fairlight here, in order to just be able to click this arm to record button and have it automatically patch, what you need to do is come up to DaVinci Resolve at the top, Preferences, and then under your System, Video and Audio, I slash O, your input device here needs to be set as whatever you want. Now, when you set that once, it's always going to be there as the same input device. For me, it's my Evo 4 audio interface. And then you can just go ahead and hit Save. So now, in theory, once you go to hit Arm to Record here, then it should automatically patch in your microphone from your audio interface or whatever you selected there in uh, that particular area of the preferences. So that should work out. Now, I've been trying it a little bit, and maybe it's because like I'm, I'm recording now, so it's not working at the moment. So I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit 
and see why is it not working? How can we get it to work? And then I'll have to make a video about it for you guys to check out. So that way you guys can get it working too. And what this is meant to do is just save some steps in the process of having to patch and then, you know, arm your track and all that to record, you know, like a voiceover directly into Resolve. So um, I'm going to dig into that a little bit. But the idea is that you just click that arm to record button and then it should just start recording for you. So there you have it. That is 10 more things that were added here in DaVinci Resolve 19 Fairlight that weren't the big, you know, cool announcements with AI and all that stuff like the Ducker and the Remixer and all that. But these are things that got added or improved here in Fairlight. And there's always tons and tons of little changes that get made when an update to DaVinci Resolve is put out here. And uh, I'm going to make videos about them as I stumble on them and discover them for you guys. So that way we all know what's going on here, right? But if you guys have questions on any of these features or anything else that's new in Resolve 19, drop me a comment. Let me know. We'll dig into it, look into it a little bit more. I am going to have some more videos coming out with uh, more info about some of the bigger tools that were released for Fairlight here, uh, as well as some of the other cool stuff that came out for Resolve 19. So lots of videos to make and uh, lots of info to deliver to you guys. So with that said, I'm out of here, going to edit, going to film, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.